tekina chaseti. The dech takes the jivu, Yeshua Aya Haski, the dech Aya German shepherd. But the Yahasu are Nij, Nij Kach. The Uski Guj Kanahasu are. We the Akushta. He was a good one, sir, do a subway. Time to wash it up. Then who would shark, then who would die? He knocked in way to push that. Yeah, the cage the up. It's at Naha to see Naha as you shark Age to saw. Can you hear anything? No, like nothing. <laughs> okay. I think it stopped transmitting for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I liked. I oh. liked this. Oh, I don't know. Okay, there we go. Oh, John. I don't know where we get kicked out, but uh, we get kicked out. Just telling stories. How are you guys doing? Good. Yuck, eh? I like your stories. Okay. And I looked down and it was just it was sort of having difficulty, so I'm not sure where it left off. Um, do you guys understand any bits of that? Yeah, I don't know how to fly here down there. I'm talking about the steel. Yeah. The belly of the steel, you make with the. And the south side of the Prince of Wales, we call it the tunnel. Hi, why? So he took the stomachs. Well, they used to kill these seals one time and then just tie the stomachs and inflate the stomachs and tie them to the seal. And when the tide came in, they'd float them up and they're easier to put in the boats. And uh, so he ties them onto his feet and he walks across. He walks down to Haida Gwaii. So it took four days. He walks for four days.
Can can you guys hear Lance? I can't hear anything. No, me neither. Nothing. Okay. I was wondering if I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tim. <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Sometimes I just like I'll sit here for five minutes, being like, I wonder if. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm not sure if it freezes for other people or not. Yeah. And then I don't want to interrupt him if he is talking and everyone else can hear him. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same here. <laughs> Usually this works well, but sometimes there's funny little bugs in there. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Just something that hits on certain days. I think there that. Yeah. I wonder if it's um. If the internet gets too full, if lots of people are using it at the university. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, lame. I asked them to look at this network. It's the only place I get kicked off on campus, but it seems to be getting. I don't know what caused it. They said maybe there's some overheating network point or something. I'll ask them to look at it again and try to get some more urgency to it because we can't have click a class if we keep getting cut off. Uh, so anyway, so they trade this canoe making technology, and they trade the southern part of Prince of Wales. And you've got Clinket um, names for all of those communities. There's there were four. Um, and it's interesting that they would sort of reside in those places that had Clinket names. But it could be that those were really good communities there. Right? So there's there's that side of the story where they say, well, they traded, and then those people that were living there migrated over to. Saxman, but then there's some, for instance, who said the Haida came up and pushed them out of that area. Kind of, you know, the, the silly stories are just really interesting. And then they used to live in Pelican. Uh, then I said about harvesting seaweed. Did you get that part? Uh, yeah, so like, you know, for collecting, sit, sit in is a is a verb uh, to carry. We'll get to carrying verbs probably next semester. We'll move around with those a little bit. But when you use a carrying verb or a handling verb, it means like to pick something up or to hand it to somebody or to carry it somewhere. Uh, and it depends on what type of object it is. So the, the verb changes, but these verbs have sort of roots in, in their meaning. And for set in, it means to harvest something. So it really comes from like picking a bunch of berries or picking a whole bunch of things and then carrying them around in um, these sort of full containers too. Uh, so we're, yeah, we're harvesting and then there's an island out there with a whole bunch of sea lands on it. We get close to them and they don't want us there, so they start getting real loud. And then we left, um, but I noticed you know, there was, there's usually a big one on the top. They call them new shaka pao. New shaka pao. New shaka pao. And that's the man of the means. They they fight, and then whoever wins all the fights gets to be the boss. So we call them us to shut the honey. Their their leader. Shut the honey is the old word for leader. It means um, stands at the head of the people. And then, uh, anyway, so we go more picking and they had it. Most like husky and stove That's been my experience. And it's probably instinct. You know, you get wet in the winter and it can be a hard time. Some of them do. And then this one, they had a dog and uh, friends of mine. He liked to be in the boat. He liked to come out with us. And he liked to wander around in the water. But there was this one male. They're sending these young males out to sort of scout on us, I think, because they come and just look at us, peeking out of the water. And their eyes are just really big, staring at us. And uh, it was getting pretty close. So I pulled that dog. And it was just like, man, nothing comes up. But it's over. They're just so strong. Just vicious. You get near them. But yeah, that's just how animals are. And that got me thinking of another story. You guys catch the sort of sequence of stories? The Kushta. Yeah, the Kushta. Like I didn't realize how yeah. how uh, how I don't know vicious is the right word, but how uh, dangerous they could be. I think it's a dangerous. Song. 
So I got a cousin, and he was telling me a story of these two dogs, like this beautiful dog, it's like a husky, a German shepherd. And he was walking them on the beach, and they, they came up over this little hill, and there was a tide pool there. And I got to find the word tide pool for somebody. Um, but uh, so he gets over, and then like there's this tense situation because the dogs are on either side of the land otter. He's in this little tide pool. Then my cousin said he was trying to move slow so he didn't agitate the situation. But then when he saw his dogs were getting ready to pounce, he tried to, to, to move and to yell at them to get them not to do it. But then whether that attitude or not, they, just, they jumped in there and then he said it was, it was over like that. They just killed both of his dogs. Get their throats out. Wow. That's kind of where I am. Wow. And then, oh, and then at one point I was talking about Downtown, and some people are upset because they're hiding their hide 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 homes. Can't really argue that they're not. <laughs> so discussion. I just stayed out of it. Too high to can't can't come. Can't have my input because it's not my country. I can't understand why people are upset. All right. Uh, so hopefully we don't get kicked off anymore. Anything on your mind before we? Back to the weather. I'd like to do that, you know, talk a lot like that. So let's say a story. Mm -hmm. so I remember going up in that glacier bay, you know, go past Strawberry Island, maybe from Gus Davis and going up. Long time to get there, you know. Clean, 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 you know, huge. And, uh, even by boat, I'm more boat. Strawberry Island, Marble Island, and there's a sequel later, it's on Marble Island, but there's a big island, and it's just, they, it's called, they call it an island, but it's just a big, huge rock. Mm -hmm. you know, nothing growing on it, you know. But on the back side, there was a Marble Island, you can't see the, the next rock that is uh, behind it, you know, and there's some distance between it. Huh. But you can hear the sea lions. They are, they're all on that. And you can hear them and you can smell them before you get around to be able to see them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Stink blue bat. Yeah. And you can get there, you know. And you can yes. hear them bark and then growl. And then <laughs> but I was just want well, to be nice to be able to put something like that kind of down. Yeah, yeah. So, you you know, one thing we're looking at in linguistics, and when we start talking about how these verbs work, when you're telling stories, it's almost all perfected verbs. So you learn these perfected verbs, so you can just stack them together. So you can say, um, let me look up the name for that place real quick. Because so, I, I can't remember why, but I was looking at uh, Marble Island actually not too long ago. Uh, you've got, is there North Marble Island, South Marble Island? The problem, yeah. I think. The South one is, I think, where the uh, uh, seagulls live, the right? So then uh, uh, would be with the, all the sea lions. So if they let them, I mean, there's two big boulders, right? One might be north, one south. There. So looking on, uh, and they're pretty far up there. So it's like right up here is where they've got them on here. And the names that are in the Thornton book are Nande Nechati and Ichdi Nechati. Uh, so it's actually, it's a, when they say North Marble Island, South Marble Island, that's actually a pretty direct translation. Um, and then... You know what I'm speaking of, the, the Marble Island where the seagulls lay their eggs? Uh-huh. You know, because the thing that Ahuna has been going there for, you know, I would like to say for, since time immemorial, uh -huh. I'm gathering seagull eggs right to know that. Sit. Uh -huh. Sit eat. Sit eat. 
So since I became a national park, my mom said that they, um, you know, when they gathered the seagull egg, would poach them. Uh -huh. That's how they would, before they eat them. So, right. it was, yeah, so he was telling me how that's how they eat them. He goes, but now we have to poach them twice people. <laughs> <laughs> twice <laughs> poached. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah, and so uh, learning how to, you know, and say, it's a day would two. A day would two. Oh, we went there by a boat. And so you start learning these basic things and how to put them together, which is what we're trying to do with our Tuesday, Thursday night class is just starting to string some, some basic phrases together. And then it's really fun because then you can sort of converse and, and you can start telling stories about things that happened and maybe they'll lead to other stories. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> All right, it's weather time. So getting back to here, we'll just try and run through these and then let me know if you got We did these two. We'll do them again. What's up, Kuwa T? What's up, Kuwa T? What's up, Kuwa T? What's up, Kuwa Ti? What's up, Kuwa Ti? What's up, What's up, Kuwa Ti? Oh, Digon. Oh, Digon. Oh, Digon. Oh, Digon. Oh, Digon. Oh, Digon. So that's for it to be sunshine. So I get it. So frosty? What's that? That's not in here. It's frosty. Yeah, it's in here. We'll get to it. But for the weather, there's one for the weather to be frosty, which is a bird. Okay, so the next one down. What's the cover tea? Push the goose. 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 So one thing we'll start paying attention to is in the middle. So right here with this L I, you have. Um, oops. You have the classifier, right? And the classifier combines with the root to make the verb, right? So the root has meaning, and in some cases, the root is actually a noun, and that's what you've got here. So one thing you could say, like for example, let's say I had a sweater on, that sweater had a hood, and that hood had a couple of ears on it. So for whatever reason, you could call it shikukukutas. It's the eared shirt. So there's a there's a really interesting thing that goes on with this L group of classifiers. Shit. It means when you do that and you throw a noun on there, it means it has that. So you could say shikushi, uh, which means it's thumbed, or it has a dorsal fin. You're saying it's finned. So in this case, you got tuk, which is the weather. Shigus, which is being cloudy. It has clouds. Goose on its own is cloud. So you can say goose, 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 goose. And what's really fun, there's a word, uh, yain. Say yain, 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 yain. Anybody heard that word before? Uh -huh. You know what it is? No. It's a sea cucumber, right? It's a sea cucumber. I had a student who was giving lessons in um, Simshia, Shmialke, and uh, she said Yain was a cloud in Simshia. And it was really fun because in my mind I could see this sea cucumber drifting <laughs> over the horizon. Okay, so now. 
So as we start getting into more verbs, we're going to pay real close attention to the tone at the you know when we look at the verb root. So the verb root here is a for something to be hot or warm, and then because uh, it can be long and low, ah, uh, it could be long and high, ah, uh, or it could be short and high, ah. Uh. And we're going to pay real close attention to what form that's in, because it changes when we start conjugating the verb. So this one says it's uh, imperfective, right? Yes. So the imperfective means it's it's happening right now. It's usually what it means is happening right now. The perfective means it has already occurred. Uh, so we would use perfective verbs for all kinds of things, especially telling lots of stories, right? Uh, and then we'll just pay attention to that because for this lesson we're looking at, we're starting to talk about how these verbs work. Imperfective, perfective, and future are the three that we're going to look at. Okay, so now I go to this one, just kind of today, just a little bit. What's up, Kuwati? Pussy art. Pussy art. Pussy art. Pussy art. Pussy art. Pussy art. So now we've got this one with again. 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 And it can also just be get on its own. So we've looked at this, it turns things into a yes or no question. So for example, if I said, pussy out get, what would the answer be? Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And I'd say, who would talk get? Who would get? Okay. So now we're turning. We're making these weather statements into questions. And these are statements, all these weather things are all verbs. All these weather things are all verbs. And then we can turn them into yes or no. And, and we'll start looking at also um, negative forms of some of these verbs and how they start to change. And the weather is good because with weather, you can't, there's no subjects or objects, right? There's nobody making it cold, cloudy, you know. So then we got yes or no. And we also have kunach. 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 This means really. And it's an adverb, right? So it's you're saying, you know, so it would come before the verb. But you would say today, unless you weren't from Alaska, maybe. Kunach pussy aunt. It's really cold. Maybe it was like zero. And well, I guess it depends where you're from. Uh, I don't know. What's, what do you consider good enough? Um, probably minus 30. That's good enough. Kusi on. That's good enough. Kusi on. Another one. So looking at this, there's a. This is a similar one. When I get off, when I click off the. Or can contract to. And that means too much. Like it's, you said, because she says 30 below is punach pussy on. And I say that's punach pussy on. That's too cold. I ain't coming to visit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would. Uh. <laughs> I would. 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 I 
White Horse Dave to a Pohu had to was a who a ka movie a yabu to sit in a kana at hai to waha at hada to hiti kaya. Tekriki a talk, hunna talk away a ta a yadu jit out the town. At lee, White Horse Dave get to was a ตาเนี่ยอ่ะเวดีเอ๊ะเดสเลตาคือสิทธิ์แท็กวัดคือสิอาจขออาจจะเวคนักเอาแต่การใหญ่ Celsius, Kachu Fahrenheit. Chashuga away, 40 below, to 40 below, to Dechia. Tetlach to Ash. But it never bothered me that much. Um, 40 below. Fairbanks, we had 55 below one winter. That was a bit much. Um, cars would get like, now it's the car would start, but then it would get frozen and we'd get stuck in it. And it's fine. Like, Rocket back and forth. You can just hear something, smell something burning. Um, I lived in Skagway. It was always interesting because it would be it'd be 20 in Skagway or maybe zero, but then if you wanted to go to Whitemore, it was 40 below. Once so you got over the mountain, lot cool. Um, so then, if somebody were to ask you, uh, and the Kunach works, yeah, I guess you could say it's really cloudy. Or it's um, in terms of the weather, it's really funny. My brother was laughing. We were watching the news one time when we were living in Minneapolis, and he said, "Tomorrow it's either going to be partly cloudy or mostly sunny." I'm like, what? <laughs> like, That's the same thing. The so, punach is uh, really so. Now we can start to change it. So, and those are sort of those are when we look at that set of verbs, a if we take the puh off of the front, which means weather in this case, we take the puh off of it, and we get yake. Right? And we, we use that verb, achtu yake, I feel good. Or if something happens and you like it, you say yake away. That's good. Uh, and then out the gone, that, that means for the sun to shine, it means it's burning or it's lit. Uh, next we had what? Oh, is that next? Kushi goods. Oh, kushi goods. So that one, you wouldn't really take the uh, the kuh off of it. You know, you couldn't do something. Things aren't cloudy. It's usually the weather that's cloudy. And then ah, uh, the kuh off of that, and you get yitah. So you could say get ah, it's hot water, right? Or you could say touch it and don't touch it. Get ah, Don't touch it. It's hot. It's hot, right? Like talking to kids or something. Uh, so then, um, so you could pull the weather part off of that. Pussy hot, same thing. Cold water, you know. And they, they talk about that a lot. Like the fish really like cold water. So those verbs, uh, you're adding this weather part to it. When we get into precipitation, you get da kusetan. So everybody say da kusetan. Da kusetan. Da kusetan. Da kusetan. Da kusetan. Da kusetan. So the other thing we're going to find out about clinket verbs uh, and clinket categorizes everything. It loves to put things into categories. It's just how the language functions. So in English, verbs, right? And, and I think you can get into types of verbs, but Clinket really specifies what types of verbs there are. So there are 
for something to be a certain way. And these are a lot of emotions, right? I'm lonely, uh, I'm sick, uh, I'm, I'm good. Uh, and then there's uh, what we call event verbs, for something to occur, to say like, uh, you know, so, so something happens and it's not necessarily somebody doing it. It exploded. Um, in a lot of these, like, the sun is shining. It's an event. It's happening. Um, and then we get an act, which is a very common verb for somebody to do something. Right? And we're going to run into a lot of those. Uh, and then we get motion verbs. And motion verbs are just for something to be moving around. And in Clinkit, motion verbs work differently than all of the rest of the verbs. Uh, so in this case, we have emotion verb. And then one thing you get with emotion verbs, before the verb, you get one of these directional type of things. And in this case, you get dog, which is a really interesting word in clinking. It seems to have a, a whole series of meanings. From going to the shore, out to sea. Dog. They they paddle or they went in their boat away from the shore. It could also, in certain cases, mean to come from the woods out into an open space. And then the deer walked out into the open. It could also mean falling onto a fire or just falling down with precipitation specifically to fall down. So you get dark. And one of the things that it's difficult for me, long vowels long, because I'll always say siu daku setan, because I'll say it real short. It's going to be siu daku setan, and then the last one is short. So we'll we'll start with snow, because we're getting close to snow. Great daku setan. Great dark. Great daku setan. Great daku Glade dark wusitan. So with the as far as like raining, snowing, hailing, sleeting, fine rain, um, if it's it's just coming down, uh, all you gotta do is is change the name of the precipitation. Snow is falling down. Snow is precipitating. Right? It's falling down. And then. Enough. What's that? You could say uh, but as far as precipitating, we'll look at another verb to say like when it's really when it's really coming down. And, and then there's also one for like just drizzling rain. You know, so there's lots of ways to describe weather because weather's really important. It, it's important in English. It's sort of it's a default thing for people to talk about. They talk about the weather, you know, and everybody. It gives you something to complain about. <laughs> and then, um, but it's important to get this well. They would say, uh, like, you know, we're from Chilkut, Chilkut, Skagway, and the, the northern and eastern area of Haines, Chilkut Lake. And my great grandpa, he said that people would watch, and when the snow gets halfway down the mountain, uh, they, would, they wouldn't come down the channel very much at all, because the, the weather's on the Taking the ferry up there in the wintertime, you know, you know, the wind just screams through that channel. Uh, and then when the snow starts to, to melt and it goes back up, then they'll go through a lot more. So dude, there's, there's a verb next week just for comes from sitting there and watching the weather to see what it's going to do. Especially if they're going to try to get a paddle from uh, Anchorage. And you need to sort of keep an eye on the weather. So we could change that to see you. See you, dog. 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 And so if it's happening right now, we're still using this perfective verb in the wo at the front is, is the giveaway for the perfective form. When you see wu, 
in the front, and then a classifier, sit, and then the roots, ton. That's Cadets, who sit ton. Cadets, dog, 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 so cadets is a noun. Sitting is a noun. From the sky. Kakshahin da Kakshahin da Kasech That was my favorite. That's my favorite weather, my friend. Okay, so back to. Uh, so those are precipitating, and then there's those are the the main ones. You know, we got like snow, rain, sleet, or slush. It's to be fog. The weather is in this foggy sort of state. A yow did tea. A yow did tea. A yow did tea. So I don't know if I've got the heavy, and I'll have to check the precipitation. I think there's a different one for heavy rain and then for heavy snow because they're going to fall differently. Uh, and then there's one for, because you can have. Which means the, the rain drops, super fine things that might blow around. But then, um, means for it to be drizzling. The size of the raindrops is about the amount of the fumes. It's not really rain, it's just drizzling. A yao de tea. 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 Stormy or windy. And this doesn't mean like the wind is just sort of it means the you know moving the trees around. And that's it's snowing heavily. And that has to do with like you know, coming up against a vertical surface. Let's do a quick recap. We'll do these, uh, run through all of them, going back to eighty seven. What's up, Kuwiti? What's up, Kuwiti? What's up, Kuwiti? Kuwa ke, kuwa ke, kuwa ke, kuwa ke. Push the goods, push the goods, push the goods. Ah, kuwa, 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 Pussy art again. 
Clay da Gusetan, Clay da Gusetan, Kakshahin da Usetan, I yow the tea. 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 I Naming Hintak Adigartusa Tekshigi. We'll try naming things in the water. Things in the water. All fish, all things that crawl and live on the beach. Um, if they're sort of like amphibians, that's fine. I never know where the frogs go. They're kind of born in the water. There's a few water things. Say Gigi. They're both. All right. See you guys on Monday. Cheers. Cheers.